evening. The Lord's been mighty good to us and has blessed us in so many ways. Let's start the service off by singing a song that sometimes we're guilty of just singing around the Thanksgiving time of the year, but God's good to us all year round. Amen. Let's stand together. If you want to use your hymnals, hymn 569, we'll sing the first, second, and last verse of Count Your Many Blessings. Amen. Anybody else from this section? That was the same. What, what? <laughs> they got hired. Thank you, adults, for hiring them youngins so they can earn some money for their camp. Amen. Hey, that's a blessing. Y'all to be thankful for right here in this section. Amen. Time away with your family. Who else here? One blessing. Amen. Yes, sir. One by one right here. Safety, privilege to worship. <laughs> Yay, man, put that walker down. Get it out of here. Family, word of God. Awesome, right here. All oh, the rain, boy, wasn't we in much need? Rain. All your blessings. Church family, wow, that's awesome. Hey, I'm ready to preach right now. We can just go on and get into the Word. That's good. We're so blessed. We have so much to be thankful for. Don't miss out on opportunities we have daily to give Him praise. Let's sing that last verse together on this first hymn. back up and lead us in this opening word of prayer.
Amen. Once again, we just have a couple of announcements we just want to keep in the forefront of everybody's mind. First of all, the men's cookout is still on July 19th. That is going to be here at the church at 630 for everyone who, just, who uh, uh, we made sure that we wrote it down this time on the uh, on the sign-up sheet, so we know that everyone is going to be able to be on the same page for that. So that is going to be on this Tuesday at 6.30 right here at the church. We're really looking forward to a great time of fellowship, food, and a wonderful uh, wonderful challenge that we're going to have uh, with us that evening. Again, now back to our camp stuff. I'm still uh, going to be asking to have a quick, very brief meeting with all of our parents who uh, have young ones going to camp immediately after the service. Uh, we're going to keep it very brief, not even five minutes, I would guess, unless we just have several questions uh, that, we would like, that we need to get some answers for. <clears throat> Again, have our packing list as, uh, out in the Welcome Center. Please make sure you grab one. Pay close attention to all of the information on there. If you have not been able to... Uh, uh, do the medical info or the uh, waivers that is necessary for the uh, kids to attend camp. Please dig back in your emails that you gave me uh, to register the kids. They uh, will be there. They send it out uh, every couple of weeks. And even right before they go to camp, they uh, do send them out one last time to all of the parents. Uh, on a, it doesn't matter what time you get them in. They could be the day before camp, uh, but they, the kids will be okay, so you don't need to stress. But please uh, try to get that in as quickly as possible. The I know the people at the camp will really appreciate that, and that will take a good load off of, uh, off of them. It was wonderful to hear we've already got kids getting hired for our uh, Hire a Kid Day, and we are looking forward to them being able to alleviate the cost uh, on the parents for, uh, for this trip. I just, also, I just want to take a chance to brag on our church family because we have already had the opportunity to ha help several families uh, take their kids to youth camp uh, from this, the generosity of our, of our family, uh, from the family of God right here. So thank you all so much for helping us with that. Uh, also, our spaghetti dinner is coming up this Wednesday night. That is going to be 5 to 6.30. If you would like your uh, kid to be able to uh, work a little bit, gain a little extra money, please try to be here around 4.30 at the latest to try and uh, so we can get the kids organized so that they know what's going on. Uh, we'll try to send out a phone call uh, on Tuesday to, uh, and on Wednesday to give a little extra reminder Reminder for everybody as well, so please be on the lookout for that. The uh, price for it is twenty dollars for a family, or, or if it's just yourself, seven dollars for a plate. Uh, we just look forward to having the kids a chance to serve us and just be able to uh, earn a little extra money again to alleviate the cost uh, for their uh, for their families. All right. Again, we were wonderful to be able to have the choir back in practice today. Uh, it was my first time being able to come back, and it's what been almost a year now pretty close to since I've been able to join the choir back, so I'm, I'm happy to be back. And if you are still looking to join the choir, please come and talk to a pastor, or, or, and we will get you worked into that uh, as much as, as soon as possible, all right? That is all that I have in the way of announcements. We've got another song that's actually coming up right now, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, Pastor. Yes, amen. It was a blessing to have the choir reassemble today, so thank you, choir members, and I look forward. I was blessed in the practice, as always, and I look forward to hearing them uh, next week. All right, men, just uh, he's already mentioned the sign-up list, but please help us. I think this morning we had uh, 22 already, which means we'll probably have over 30 again. But if you're here tonight and uh, you have not signed up, please do that because we'll make uh, the final uh, preparations on the food tomorrow. I want to make sure we have that covered. And so if you'll sign up for that or if you know you're bringing somebody with you, just write a number down, write your name and a number, and that will help us make sure that we're totally prepared for that. We look forward to that time of uh, fellowship together. All right, let's stand once more. 168. If you like to use your hymn book, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, these are shorter verses packed with powerful truths and meaning. And so let's sing uh, all of them together, uh, all four verses together here as we worship before our Lord.
my soul, my life, and my all. A very powerful and challenging, wonderful song. Let's worship the Lord in our giving. You be faithful as the Lord has blessed you. We'll start with sections two and four tonight, and then sections one and three if you have an offering uh, to give to the Lord. Brother Walter, would you stand and lead us in this time of prayer? afternoon this evening have reflected on and commented on the mercy of God and he's been so uh, good to us and we all realize without his mercy uh, we'd all be in a heap of trouble amen and uh, so let's just sing this course together you know it and uh, sing it one time three thank you Lord for saving my soul because ultimately all of our blessings stem from that don't they and we become a child of the king and saved and since that time uh, God's just been blessing us over and over and over again and I don't want you ever to get over uh, praising him for the day he reached down and saved you. So sing it as a prayer to the Lord uh, this evening as we thank him. Psalm 1, please. Psalm chapter 1. Well, it started off as what I thought would be a uh, devotional type uh, message and presentation tonight. Uh, just continued to, to grow and grow. So I'm going to ask the guys to go ahead and throw the title up tonight. I'm just going to preach on planted to bring forth fruit. Planted to bring fruit forth uh, fruit and uh, we're going to read this passage of scripture here in just a moment but I do want to of course knowledge you know this is a familiar passage of scripture and those of you that mark in your Bible as you turn there you probably already see 
uh, verses underlined, circled, highlighted, notes written uh, for sure if you do that. And if you don't and you don't have a problem with it, I'd encourage that uh, uh, for you to do that and uh, just highlight verses and different things the Holy Spirit shows uh, you. Uh, so although we're in a familiar passage, we're going to do something very unfamiliar in the way that you see I have just have one verse on the screen. And we're really going to focus much of our attention and uh, on purpose on that one verse. And so uh, no way are we going to try to uh, exegete and uh, hit all of the content that's included in this most familiar uh, psalm. And we will look at uh, the first couple verses as we kind of just go through. But I really want the focus to be on verse 3. And I want to highlight that in your minds now. So you're prepared for that, uh, but also the Holy Spirit can already be working in our hearts on this matter of our life. If we're planted, our life bringing forth the fruit that uh, it ought to, to bring forth. All right, so let's focus on that. Let's stand if you're physically able. Psalm 1, beginning in verse 1. Uh, we'll read a short uh, chapter here and then zero in on verse 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. For all of your life, you've heard of the progression in that verse, of the downward spiral that takes place. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, or like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Back to our text, verse verse 3, and he shall be like a tree. What's the next word? Planted. Planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Father, would you have blessed the reading, teaching, and preaching of your word in this time we have together. May your Holy Spirit be uh, the real preacher. May we be receptive, spirit-filled listeners, and be challenged by your word tonight. Hide us behind the cross. Give us your powers. We share what you've given us. It's in your son's name we pray and ask these things. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Let's do as I mentioned and just go through these uh, first verses. You know the word blessed there. You've heard happy, happy or prosperous. It has the idea is the man. And then it goes through this uh, 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 series of steps uh, negating uh, that we ought to do these things. Blessed is the man that walketh, what's the next word? Not in the counsel of the ungodly. So let's unfold just a couple truths quickly, again, as we try to race forward to the content in verse 3. Note in your minds, first of all, that those who desire the blessing and approval of God must not walk as the world walks. Okay? If you're not taking notes, fine, make sure it gets in your mind. If you want the blessing and the favor of God, you must be ever so careful not to walk as the world walks. We're not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. In our society today, there's been a new standard uh, that's been, uh, that's infiltrated really uh, our society, our families, our world, and, and unfortunately our churches that is trying to, and in many cases has become the new norm, uh, a, a new standard that all of a sudden is now acceptable in this life. And what decades ago the world would not even accept, how many of you know it's true that now the church in many cases are accepting those things the world used to reject? There's a new standard that's being put out and you as a believer, if you're not careful, you're caught in that net of thinking that just because the standard of the world, the standard of the ungodly, the standard of the non-believers is now accepted that we can lower our standard as long as it stays within the confines that they have given us. Can I tell you this? The standard that God gives us and the standard from the Word of God cannot, shall not, must not, with His help, will not be lowered. Amen? That ought to be our determination. That ought to be how strong we feel about this, that the world can go as low as they want to go, but our standard will not be 
lowered. By the way, the reason the world lowers their standard as they do is because there's little and in many cases now no regard for the word of God. What the sinner used to some degree, Brother Wayne, respect and even fear now is scoffed and mocked and totally ignored. A good reminder to us that if we're going to hold the standard high as God calls us to, we better stay in the book. Amen? Every single one of us. So our walk is to be different than that of the world. I know that's basic, but I hope you can play out your life in your mind, allow the Holy Spirit to navigate through your life and, and really compare, is my life really that much different in the world? Is there an obvious distinction between how I live, what I say, where I go, what I do, than that of the world? We're to beat to a different drum, aren't we? But sadly to say, As a younger minister, there's many within the church beating to the same drum of the world. And what used to make some uneasy and bother some, now they've gotten used to it. And it's not as bad. And it's gradual as we'll see in this verse. I challenge you just in passing by and taking a quick look. Let's walk like a believer. Let's walk like a believer. I I will tell you this before we move. I'm tired of churches conforming to the world. Sick of it. And I love the brothers and sisters. I'm not not saying they're not saved. I'm not saying they're... I'm just saying I'm tired of churches conforming to the ways of the world. And with God's help, it has to stop. Keep reading that verse. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the council of of the ungodly we're not to embrace the ideas of the world notice next it says nor standeth in the way of sinners i'm still really on that first phrase i'm getting ahead of myself we're not to embrace the ideas of the world let me ask you a question since when because because we act like this is reality and unfortunately it is for some has since when you don't have to answer this did the world become experts at how we're to do church. Now, Bobby, many people would ask me, Preacher, why would you even ask that question? (laughs) The world has no business telling the church how to do church. And I would say a hearty amen, and I agree, and I would sign the document saying the world has no business telling the church how to do church. But somehow, somewhere along the way, the world has become such experts at telling the church how to do church that the church is now listening to the world as they tell them how to do church. We're to walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. But yet we're we're folding and we're backing down and backing away and taking the ideas of the church and saying, hey, if it worked for them, it'll work for us. But the Bible still says we're not to compromise, we're not to walk, we're not to stand, we're not to sit, we're not to conform to the pressures of this life. And by the way, if that makes me stand out like a sore thumb, then God make me the best sore thumb in the world. Amen? We're to be different. We're not to compromise. And I'm telling you, too many of our brothers and sisters in Christ are conforming one step at a time. We're born again. We're brought out of that life. We're resurrected into a new life. I can remind you Romans 12 too. Be not conformed to this world. If it works for the world and the world likes it, why in the world would I want to bring it into the church? By the way, time out. If the world comes into the church and leaves the church and feels comfortable why in the church, there's a problem. Are they welcomed? 100%. Are they to be loved? 100%. Are we to be kind? 100%. Are we to do what we can to reach them? Yes, 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 yes. But if they come from the world system, knowing what it's like, coming, by the way, by the way, just wake up, call the Christians here, slap yourself. They're coming expecting something different. 
And we're giving them the same junk that they get all the time because we're taking counsel from the ungodly and then we wonder why we don't see them back. We wonder why we can't reach them. We wonder why they don't get saved because we're not giving them anything different than they get all the time. We've got to quit conforming to their ideology and to their ways. Yet far too many have compromised their stand for the Lord. And you know this, you're you're spiritually mature. It's gradual, isn't it? The devil doesn't typically take a church, Brother Jimmy, and just take it from A all the way to F in one yank. They check out B and they toy around with B, they get comfortable with B, and then they're, they're B. And then that's no longer attractive, Brother Linwood, and so they start smelling C, and C looks better and better, and they're C. And, and B, you know, that wasn't so bad as everybody said because they got comfortable, now C's not so bad, right? And step, 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 step to where you now have many of the churches looking, sounding just like the world. Second Thessalonians 2.15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast. Well, James, stand fast. Well, let's be careful in our church. Let's be careful in our family. By the way, what the devil can't do in the church, he's doing it in the families. And I told you a couple of weeks ago when I preached on that, that the families make up the church, and so that's why we see a slippery slope there. Families don't give to the counsel of the ungodly. It is incredible, incredible what we're allowing the world, Brother Walter, to tell us is okay for our kids. And what should be just natural and normal now for our kids. Would you stand? Would you, would you commit to stand as a husband, as a wife, parents, young people, children? Stand. And by the way, would you pray that God would help you to stand with the right position and disposition? You say, what's the difference, preacher? I always want to have the right position. But you know what? I don't want to go about it being the meanest guy in the world i don't really want to necessarily go about it snarling and biting and kicking people and hitting people and just being just being a a, a ugly face i want the right disposition i'm going to stand i'm not going to be pushed off what i believe the marker the word of god holds us to but boy would you help god would you ask god to help us to do it with the right heart and the right disposition as well and kindness, and love, and and certainly the prayer that it would impact those. Well, I'm not supposed to be preaching these verses, so let's move on. (laughs) This is the final stages. As you keep reading, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. People no longer living a separated life, compromising, conforming their stand. And then you see the progression goes from walking to standing in the way of sinners, nor now sitting in the seat of the scornful. There's one Bible example I think of in the Old Testament. Who is it? Yeah. He didn't think it would be bad to look, did he? By the way, back it up. I preached this before, but I need to go back to it because it's been many years. Abraham never thought about it when he took Lot through there. Parents, you keep that in mind. Abraham, Abraham knew he'd be okay, but I believe Lot got a taste of something back years before. And now he thinks it's okay to, to sit up that way. Walking. It's okay to, to, to get at the gate and, and direct my tent that way. Standing, if you will. It's okay to move now inside the gate and just, just be a part of it. I'm still lot, so he thought. But now he's sitting with the ungodly. And that gradual process. Look, look here at me. We're like, man, lot, that was awful. Look here, look here, look here. It'll happen to you too. It'll happen to me too. If you start letting the first part of verse 1 drag you off you'll find yourself at the gate like lot did and yeah you'll ask the question how in the world did this happen (laughs) it's gradual isn't it our adversaries wise as a serpent look now at verse three but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night and he the blessed man the one that doesn't walk with the after the counsel of the godly. He doesn't stand in the way of sinners. He doesn't sit in, the, sit in the seat of the scornful. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water 
that bringeth forth his fruit in the season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Let me quickly give you our position, our production, our prominence, and our prosperity. And we'll be done for the evening. First of all, our position. We don't need to spend a lot of time here. We can certainly rejoice in this, but aren't you thankful God's transplanted us? <laughs> we use the word transformed, but to mirror the idea of planting, aren't you thankful God has planted us as believers where our foundation is Jesus Christ? I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that my position is in Christ. And for every believer, our position is in Christ. And so although we know that, we understand that, we don't have to stay there and park here for a while, we have to start with the foundation and the reminder that being planted and being planted to bring forth fruit starts with our position in Jesus Christ. And yes, we ought to rejoice, amen, that he did bring us out of the miry clay and he did put our feet on the rock to stay. So that's our position. We're positioned in Christ. You, you're saved this evening, say a hearty amen. You're positioned. That, that's already set. You've already taken care of that at salvation. But I would challenge you before we move on to the second point. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. The junior boys this morning, we, uh, I've got just a few, few weeks left with them, and I'm enjoying the time we have to, with God's Word each Sunday morning. But we slowed down a little bit when we were talking about, uh, uh, from Psalm 103, the blessings of the Lord. How that every day we ought to praise Him for our salvation. (laughs) We ought to be so grateful, Brother James, for the fact that He saved me. And I told the guys, I said, listen guys, it, it should be daily on our hearts. It's not just a church thing. I'm thankful we can share that here. In fact, Brother Ed, I used you as an illustration in the Sunday school class. I said, it, it, it causes my cup to overflow when we have a praise time here. And he's going to share several things the Lord did for him, but the first thing he's going to share is that the Lord saved him. Hey, don't get over it. Don't be too dignified to rejoice in the Lord that he saved you. He has positioned us. And if we're positioned and you've already amen and gave your nod to that, then we are to produce. We're, we're to have a production. It says he's planted by the rivers of water and bringeth forth his fruit in his season. This is our focus for tonight, so let's zoom in and allow the Holy Spirit to help us. Note this down. Those who live for God and are planted in him are expected to bring forth fruit. Not just a good idea. Not just a suggestion, right? Those of us that are planted in Christ are expected to have spiritual fruit that's evidenced in our life. You've all used a phrase, you know, like, well, I don't know if we say it or not, but I just inspect the fruit, Right? Well, hey, the fruit should be evident in our life. Don't raise your hand and certainly don't bump somebody beside you. <laughs> but how many have been around somebody that claimed to be a Christian? And you had serious, I mean, for periods of time, you had serious questions. There's no fruit in their life. No fruit in their life. I'm talking about in their own visit. I'm not, you know, I, I've preached to you about fruit, uh, the layers of fruit that we can have. I'm not necessarily talking just about bringing other people. I'm talking about fruit in their own life as a be- believer. Hey, there ought to be fruit. That's seen in our life. There ought to be fruit that's noticeable in your life. And by the way, it should flow as a natural response to us being planted where he has planted us. Amen? Hey, hey, he didn't plant us in the desert. Hello? He didn't put us in the dry and barren land. (laughs) He planted us where we can grow. He planted us where we can bring forth fruit think about gardens in, in this area we're saturated with that thankfully and we're thankful for the farmers that, that work hard and we know at times as, as recently it's it's tough on them our neighbor uh, miss rachel uh she has had a garden 
uh, for every year, I think, except one uh, that we've been there. And I talked to her husband, Mr. Jerry, and, and she's up in age and, and also has some physical problems. She gets up early every morning and, and walks down uh, to, uh, to the water and comes back, spends time in her yard. But she'll be out there working that, working that garden work in that garden, planting. And he told me that because of his help that, that she was going to kind of not do it no more, and that's when I think she took the year off. And then I noticed this, uh, this last season that they're in now that he was out there tilling it again, and he said <laughs> she, just, she just couldn't do without it. But she's out there caring for that thing. But, you know, as she plants different rows of, of different things, she plants those seeds with the expectation of what? That in a matter of weeks, she'll start seeing and months and, and for the different items she's planting, different times of season that they're ready, but there'll be a production. There'll be something that she can break off and keep and give to her family and give to her friends. And, and we It's got to be the spiritual fruit has to be evident in our life. So there'll be, there'll be fruitfulness. There'll be fruit that comes due in its time and its, its season. God didn't save us to leave us idle, right? I told you this morning we have a responsibility and it's not satisfied by sitting in a pew. So God wants us busy. God wants us bring, bringing forth fruit. God wants fruit growing in our life. And by the way, I hope you have a desire to bring forth fruit. In your life. I hope you have a desire to see the fruit uh, that God talks about in His Word take form and shape in your life. Please, 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 please. Sometimes churches that have been around for a while and Christians who've been saved for a while, we just get in, we put it in neutral or what we think is cruise control, and we just, I, we can't do that, believer. We can't do that. Have a desire to see ongoing fruit in your life. John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I am him, the same bringeth forth, not just fruit, but much fruit. So if we're abiding in him, and he's abiding in us, then I'm sorry, but fruit is going to be a product of that. It's going to be a natural flow is how I started this part of it. It's just going to come. So I would challenge you, if you're abiding in the vine like you're supposed to be, then you're going to have fruit in your life. If you're not abiding in the vine or you're not seeing the fruit in your life, then it may be because you're not abiding like you think to other people to think that you are abiding in him. Evaluate your life right now. See where you're at. It'll bring fruitfulness, but then I chose this word flourish because it, I don't, it goes beyond just bearing fruit. Yeah, we'll be fruitful, but we'll also flourish. It gives the idea that we'll flourish by becoming healthy and vigorous and we'll be the type of Christian who blooms every season. Can I tell you, with God's help, I do not want to be the plant that rises up quickly only to wither away. We see that much in the Christian world, unfortunately, don't we? Much, and I know as pastors and, and ministers that are full time, I know we will talk with people. Oh man, we're excited, they're excited. You feel like, man, this is man, God's about to do back and change the world with this person's enthusiasm, and it's not but a matter of time until that withers away. It doesn't last, it doesn't flourish, it doesn't continue on in their life. They start well, but how many of you know them to lose desire and commitment? As the journey goes on. Hey, if we're planted, we're positioned, <clears throat> then we're going to bring forth fruit. It's going to flourish. It's going to be vigorous in our life. And I, by the way, I hope you share this, but I want to be faithful. I want to serve. I want fruit to be seen my, until the day he calls me home. Amen? Then it, then it can stop here in this life. So we're to be Productive. Then notice our prominence from verse 3. <clears throat> he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in the season. Notice his leaf also shall not wither. His leaf shall not wither. 
The idea here is that even in the tough times, he can remain vigorous for the Lord. Prominence. Not so much today and certainly not so much in, in Wilson, maybe in some of the smaller surrounding counties and maybe decades ago. Families and individuals feel would often talk about a, a figure in the community that was prominent, right? Most of the time, it wasn't your 22-year-old just coming out of college starting his career. <laughs> a, a prominent figure that would be referred to in, in a community, in, in a smaller community, would be what? Be, be an older gentleman, an older lady that had been around for a while, and everybody knew the faithfulness she or he had to that community. And everybody knew what they were about, and they had established that kind of reputation that in the good days and the bad days, man, they were there. They were about the same. There was a prominence that's there. He says here that that, that person that's there is leaf shall not wither, that even in the times of drought he'll remain steadfast in the Lord. We're planted, and he plants us there. We're positioned. We're bringing forth fruit. We're productive. But can I challenge you? There ought to be a prominence there. Building our lives upon a firm foundation, growing strong in the Lord. Can I tell you personally? I don't want my leaves to fade. Do you? I don't want them to wither away and as the changing of the seasons show us fall off. Not spiritually, I don't. I want to day by day. By the way, sometimes we think we somehow can jump from year five to year 50. Meaning you're saved and you got in church and you've been busy going for the Lord. I'm not going to talk about in, in full-time ministry or even out in 50 plus years. We don't do this often. I think we ought to give these individuals a hand. Would you, would you help me giving them a hand? Of appreciation. You know what this is? Stay up for a minute. This is a little bit of prominence. Has it been per? Come on now. Has it been perfect all fifty years? <laughs> Why'd you hesitate? <laughs> Not because we've not done anything special. Certainly. Not because we are anything special. But just because His grace and His strength can get us to the place where we're grounded, we're planted, we're productive, we're bringing forth fruit. And then there's a prominence. that There's a little reputation in town that, hey, the winds might get a little hard in this next storm, but said person, I guarantee you, is still going to be standing when it's over thank you individuals you can be seated and thank you for your faithfulness and modeling for all of us what ought to be our desire then notice he ends with the prosperity his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper now the 
prosperity preachers run with this, don't they? Don't 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 look up a message, uh, prosperity message online. They'll get you messed up really quick. God gives a final promise though here for a Christian who is completely dependent upon Him. And by the way, the only way this works is because of a complete dependence in our relationship with Him. None of those individuals just standing, and none of us that were sitting hoping to stand at the Lord Terry's get there on our own or get there apart from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Get that settled in your mind. And I don't mean just a salvation. You've got to walk with him every single day. But he gives us a promise here. God isn't promising, Brother Vance, that if you just feel your youth again and go start another business, <laughs> go get him tomorrow morning, that God's just going to bless it and you're going to be a multi-millionaire made over. Okay, now you might hear that somewhere on TV. You know, if you claim it and come up on stage and let them hit you in the forehead and wave their coat over you, and somehow every time catch you as you fall out, I mean, I don't know how the timing is just always so perfect, isn't it? That, that you're going to go out and your next endeavor is just going to put you on the millionaire island. That's not the prosperity God's talking about here, is it? Look, I tell you, far greater than another successful business or far greater than a million dollars is God will give you an abundance in your life. It goes beyond the material things that we sometimes desire after. You can have the abundance of Christ in your life. Aren't you thankful for that? You can have a rock to lean upon and hide under when trials come. You can live a life that honors God. You can live a life that brings with it unending joy, which is deeper than any happiness we feel. You can have the opportunity, get a hold of this, to influence others for the cause of Christ. When they lay our bodies down in a box and then lower it in a grave, our success is not going to be determined on spiritually, on on what we built here for ourselves or what we had or what we obtained or not even what we gave away. Our, our success spiritually is going to be measured on what we did for Christ. How do we influence others? I don't know, we don't like to, we don't like to think about that time that's going to come for all of us at the Lord tarries, but when folks walk by our bodies, how many, if any, will be able to look in and say, man, this individual, they influenced my life. I may have never told them I missed that opportunity. I didn't capitalize, but they influenced my life more than they realized. Who are you influencing for Christ? That's what matters. That's what will live beyond our longevity here in this life. We can influence others. We can lead them to seek the Lord. And can I just say, summarize all those things singular or put together far outweigh <laughs> prosperity this world promises amen far outweighs the temporal satisfaction so let me ask you a couple questions in closing and please do not just dismiss this as closure but ask the questions honestly in your heart question number one is your life all it should be for Christ Okay, we're planted in Christ. We've established that. You're there. Praise the Lord. But is all it should be for him? You're being as productive as you ought to be for the cause of Christ. We preached against uh, walking in the counsel of the godly. Let me ask it to you this way. Are you truly day by day walking with God? I'm challenging our junior boys, man, what, what, what a special and crucial time in their life and, and all of our young people and our college students and adults. I hope these aren't the only meals you're getting a week. And I do take my responsibility serious to, to, to feed you spiritually, but you've got to be walking with the Lord. Our, our, you're not answering to impress anybody, just you're answering honestly. For holy God, are you truly walking with the Lord? Question number three, are you abiding 
in him and his word? Are you abiding in him and his word? I know we all like to say yes, 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 and we like to stand with pride and say, I made 100 on the test, Pastor, and I feel good about all my answers. If they're all just quick yeses, then there would be no need for a message of such nature, would there? Because we wouldn't need to be reminded that for those of us that are planted in Christ, we're positioned so we should bring, bring forth fruit. We should have some longevity and prominence that, that over time, and we haven't been perfect, we made a lot of states, but boy, we're staying the course and we're going to be faithful. Well, we ought to see some spiritual prosperity, some influence in the lives of others, some other people that, that, that man, they don't idolize us, but they look up and they say, man, with God's help, with God's grace. That's, that's, that's the true test, right? We can say yes, yes, yes all day long, but what fruit are we bearing? 